So um, I'll tell you, like I, um, you know, told the team, it's great to win. It's great to be, you know, where we are in the SEC relative to um, how we progressed. Uh, but there's difference between beating the other team and winning the game. And um, you know, we played pretty well in the game up till 24 to six. Uh, which was about halfway through the third quarter. And then we didn't finish. Uh, we didn't, we got penalties. Uh, I mean, the whole momentum of the game is on the third down stop. Uh, we get a, a grabbing a guy by the face mask after the play, you know, which, you know, to me is, it's bad. I mean, you can say what you want, but, you know, a guy does that, he's putting himself ahead of, you know, what's best for the team and, um, you know, putting yourself in harm's way of having a chance to win. And then they go down the field and score. Uh, the momentum of the game changes. Uh, we go three and out on offense, you know, have a couple drop balls, uh, miss a couple throws, and not executing, not hitting on all cylinders, let the other team back in the game, but had the resilience to, you know, take the clock at the end of the game and not give them the ball back, which is really, I think, important uh, in the game. But. Hopefully we can learn how to beat the other team, not just win the game, but beat the other team, which means you got to play for 60 minutes, you got to execute, do your job, have discipline, do it one play at a time for 60 minutes in the game. Um, look, if we didn't have the intensity we needed in the second half, that's on me. It's my responsibility. I always get asked what the halftime message was, but obviously this one is not worth repeating, so why would we even talk about it? Uh, obviously it wasn't very good. So. Um, but anyway, uh, we got a lot that we can learn from. Got a lot of respect for this team. I told this, I told our team, I said, this is going to be a different kind of fight, all right? Because, you know, Sam is an offensive line guy. He's a tough guy. He's a physical guy. And their team is going to keep fighting in the game, no matter what. They always do when they play us. So we, 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 we need to be ready for that. And uh, obviously, didn't make that point as well as I needed to. So what do you think led to the improvements in the running game in the second half and also having a deeper running back rotation today? Well, you know, we ran the ball really well the first time we had it in the second half. I mean, we had three or four really good runs. Um, you know, look, we think we got four running backs that can play, so we're going to play them when we feel like we have an opportunity to play them. So they're, that's, that's always the plan. Have we always been able to do that? No. You know, sometimes the game doesn't dictate it. Um, but. You know, I'm glad to see all those guys got to play, and I I think they all had you know good moments. Back, Coach, do you think the slow start in the second half was because of being up going into halftime and then being satisfied with that? Well, it's two games now. You know, we came out a little flat on defense at Mississippi State when we were ahead at halftime, uh, but the first drive was really the best drive we had in the second half when we got the ball and we got the kickoff. We we went down the field, uh, and. Um, didn't finish the drive, so um, and again, just didn't execute the way we needed to execute. You know, from the third down penalty, Jalen Key, we had like one or two penalties up until that point. We got multiple penalties after that. We got pass interference on third down, which would have got us off the field again, and then had to kick a field goal. So um, and we had multiple penalties on offense, which put us behind the eight ball. So. Um, you know, we just got to teach and learn from all these things and hopefully realize what it takes, not only in the game, 
but in the week of preparation all right, leading up to the game uh, so that you can go out there and play the way you need to play against really good competition. You know, I got a lot of respect for Arkansas's team. I mean, LSU beat them by three points. Ole Miss beat them by a touchdown all on the road. All right, so this is not the kind of team that you all think it, they are. They're a good team, and that quarterback is a handful. I mean, you know, when a quarterback can take a, a, a major college football player and sling him off like a gnat on a fly's ass, I mean, a fly on a, a gnat on a cow's ass, I mean, that, 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 that was one of the most impressive plays I've ever seen a player make. And, um, you know, but we said one guy gets a guy, you know, you got to hold on, you got to hang on, and we got to clean him up. We didn't clean him up. We made a couple of mental errors on defense in some of those drives that let him get back in the game, too. You know, we run a stunt the wrong way. Quarterback, you know, runs for 25 yards on a big play when it was second long. So, but we learn from all these things. Jeff Spiegel. Nick, there seemed to be uh, like some indications from your Wednesday news conference that maybe you weren't happy with the way the team was practicing. Did that bear out in the second half today? And is it good to learn a lesson like this when you get a win? I hope. I hope so. You know, I use you guys to send a message to the team. So if that's the message you got, I hope they got it on Wednesday. That makes sense. So it wasn't like I was just trying to lie to you all. I don't really lie. I try to be an honest person, tell you like it is. Don't always tell you everything you want to know, but sometimes. Nick Kelly, questions? Who else? Sometimes the pass protection was there in terms of giving Jalen the time he needed for those deep balls. Sometimes it wasn't. What do you think it needs to take for it to get more consistent overall? Well, we make some mental errors. We don't fan the first sack of the game. We. Fan to the left, left tackle and fan. Guy runs in there unblocked, sacks the quarterback. Um, some a couple times a day we got beat physically. I mean, their rusher just beat our guy. Um, and, you know, but we have to handle pressure better. I mean, we have to be able to handle pressure and stunts better. I mean, this was a big boundary pressure team. It's exactly what they did when 28 sacked the quarterback the first play of the game. It's something we practiced a lot, getting the game. and. With experience, I think our guys will learn from every one of these things and hopefully be able to get it corrected. Uh, will Riker set the SEC points record today. What does he mean to this team, and what does it mean for him to come back and achieve these goals this year? Well, I'm, I'm extremely happy for Will. Uh, honestly, I don't really keep up with those types of things, but really happy for him. You know, he has been probably – as good a player at his position, even though he's a specialist, as anybody that we've ever had here. And he's even a better person. And, you know, I think that um, he wanted to come back and try to improve, you know, his kickoffs so that he would have a better chance to be successful in the NFL. And I think this is one of the good things that name, image, and likeness brings to players, that a guy didn't have to be poor uh, and, and not be able to earn money. Uh, and be able to come back and do that as a college player as opposed to, you know, going to the draft, being a free agent possibly, not making the team, and then you're out. So um, that's one of the very good things, I think, about name, image, and likeness and players having opportunities to um, have a better quality of life while they're in college because they can stay and enhance their, their career when they need to. And, and Will was uh, smart enough to understand that, that was something that could benefit him in his future. A couple more, we'll start with Charlie. Uh, Coach, do you have an update on C.J. Dupree and Trez Marshall? Um, you know, I don't think they're bad hurt. Um, one guy's got a pulled muscle, the other guy's got bruised ribs. So um, I, I, don't, I don't, I can't tell you the extent of the injuries. I don't even think we know that yet. Coach, with Malachi on that point today, how did you think that Terry Arnold and Caleb Downs played the star position? And specifically, how do you think the communication went on the back end without Malachi Moore? Yeah, well, Malachi is a huge asset for us because he's the most experienced player uh, in, in the interior uh, to make calls and make adjustments. And uh, I, I do think the guys played, you know, better having a week of preparation than what we did you know, a week ago, it was it was tough when he went out because everybody hadn't practiced enough at those positions to do the things we needed to do. But I thought both guys did a pretty good job today. Uh, we actually played Caleb when they were in 
what we call silver people, which is 12 personnel, two tights and two wides. We played Caleb at star, a little bigger guy, a little more physical against the runs. And when we played um, against three wide outs or more, we played nickel where Terion was, you know, the star. So, and, uh, you know, I think Kristen Story stepped up and did a pretty good job out there. Um, number nine did a pretty good job. Trey did a pretty good job for us. So um, those guys were able to take advantage of their opportunities. We're hopeful. Uh, Malachi actually even went out and warmed up today. Um, we weren't going to play him in the game, but he's getting close. So hopefully uh, he'll continue to make progress. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. And hey, it was great. Great homecoming crowd, great enthusiasm. I think the th enthusiasm that the crowd showed at the end of the game was really helpful to the team. It affected them a little bit. We got a big sack that got us the ball back. Um, and then we were able to take the air out of it. So appreciate the crowd. Thanks.